Uh, greetings. My name is John Savers. I'm the candidate pro tempore of the emerging People's Party. Uh, this is a proposed party uh, whose function would be to redirect uh, the policies of this nation to the benefit of this nation and of the people at large. Um, we look to the general welfare of the people as important, uh, and we believe that a, uh, a different uh, concept of assets and use of money uh, should be put into uh, action in this country. Uh, it's not the first time that we've had a legal tender of money in this country, full legal tender country in the uh, currency in this country. Uh, during uh, the uh, war between the states, um, when Mr. Uh, Abraham Lincoln uh, was forced to face the requirement of raising vast amounts of money to suppress the seceding uh, states of the Union, uh, he in fact went to New York bankers uh, and uh, inquired about interest, uh, possibly Philadelphia bankers too, but we know New York bankers, and um, he was quoted uh, a figure above 30 percent. Of course, uh, one of the reasons the quote was high like that is that war is a risky business uh, from the point of view of the loner. But Lincoln did not want to do this. Uh, so he returned to the White House uh, to look at his options. And he recalled a friend of his from the Illinois days, a Colonel Taylor. Uh, and he got in touch with Colonel Taylor uh, and sought his advice because obviously uh, Abraham Lincoln uh, valued the man's opinion. Uh, and the man told Abraham Lincoln, uh, Abraham, uh, you just don't uh, really have a, a problem here. All you need to do is direct the Department of the Treasury to print uh, full legal tender money uh, and use that money to pay for your soldiers and war materials. Uh, and uh, this is what Abraham Lincoln did. He, his Secretary of the Treasury at the time was Mr. Chase, and he was not um, uh, enthusiastic about this approach. Uh, and um, uh, he nevertheless uh, did as he was uh, directed. Uh, and I believe $300 million uh, were printed. Uh, these became known as greenbacks or Lincoln greenbacks. And they were used initially uh, to fund the war to suppress secession. Now, uh, a subsequent uh, uh, attempt to issue legal tender money by Abraham Lincoln was thwarted in Congress when private interests were able to uh, remove from the uh, issue the full legal tender designation and the second issue uh, was not a, one that could be used for taxes, and um, it fell into um, uh, uh, disuse. Um, uh, it was an impaired currency. Uh, and this is always, always the problem with trying to create sensible currency, because those who have an interest in interest and debt mongering and so forth are also are people who have accumulated large amounts of money, and they will do what they can to bribe Congress uh, to um, uh, intimidate uh, congressmen, uh, to extort from congressmen, uh, and um, uh, to have their way uh, to impair any kind of full legal tender currency, uh, and to uh, drive the direction of the nation toward uh, money-bearing interest. 
uh, and they intend to be the recipient of that interest. But for one bright, shining moment in this country's life uh, as a nation, uh, there was full legal tender money and it worked beautifully. Uh, and that is exactly what I propose here and now uh, should the People's Party take control of the United States of America. Now if the People's Party were not able to take both the Senate and the House uh, and able to do this to, um, uh, to create the uh, national currency, full tender, uh, legal tender currency, uh, then I would propose that the president uh, declare martial law and put Congress aside until this major and necessary event occurs. Because otherwise this nation is going to collapse under the debt. Uh, it's already unpayable. The interest on it is getting to be high enough to rival uh, the defense uh, expenditures uh, and um, uh, it's just not the way to go and it can only get worse uh, with the reinstitution uh, and uh, even though uh, its experts and the major media pundits uh, all declare that the recession is over, the good times are here again and so forth, um, a, a new bubble is being created it has to be created uh, on the basis that there is debt. Uh, and the money in this country is created on the basis of debt. It's possible for the Federal Reserve to hold very low interest. And theoretically, uh, they could charge no interest for a period. But this is not normal for banks. This is a private system. They're looking for profits. Uh, and any time the Federal Reserve ch charges very low interest, uh, it is almost a public rea uh, relations uh, gesture uh, as much as um, a um, change of faith. Uh, at any rate, um, yeah, there is an old expression uh, that you, um, you, you can't push a, a wet noodle. Um, uh, they're, they're having a hard time of doing it and uh, we are supposed to wait three, four, five years until it all um, trickles down. At this point in time, uh, big banks can um, uh, take uh, uh, loans from the Federal Reserve at low interest and invest it uh, in uh, treasury bonds or the like uh, at uh, two or three times the amount of the um, uh, interest they play, pay at the loan and, and just pocket the difference. That's one of the reasons why the money does not come down uh, promptly into small businesses and into the pockets of the people and why jobs aren't being created because banks and institutions of this sort uh, have just a, a very nice profit situation that's guaranteed uh, and you can see all the banks reporting uh, uh, that their income is improved, they're paying back uh, the tarps and all that sort of thing. But bear that in mind um, the government has already shown that it can invest uh, in what might be called an asset uh, and disinvest, that is the, uh, the asset um, may be purchased back uh, and so forth. Now this is something of um, a, uh, an oddity but uh, it just uh, there is a certain uh, parallel with what I propose which is uh, that the Department of the Treasury and the direction of the President, hopefully of the People's Party, will um, issue a li full legal tender currency, meaning that it, it is um, currency which can be used to pay taxes uh, and also any and all legal obligations. Uh, we think that there are a number of ways in which this kind of currency can be quickly put into the um, domestic economy. Uh, we have suggested uh, that the Social Security recipients uh, also uh, get uh, a currency directly deposited into national bank accounts established in every state, in every urban area, uh, and that each one of these um, 
uh, citizens who have an account with a national bank would be issued an ATM, a, not an ATM, um, what might be called a debit card, uh, which uh, would be uh, usable uh, and uh, with an electronic system and so forth, uh, it would make for a very uh, tight uh, kind of uh, a money situation. Now, experts uh, in government uh, who are put in control of uh, the, um, the currency issuance would also keep an eye on uh, its being um, put in a, a, a necessary relationship, an equal relationship uh, to um, the productive increases and to the asset increases of the nation and the population increase. So that the, the country no more has an insufficiency of cash. There would be cash uh, available. It would not be something that would be implodable because it would not be based on interest. Um, the, um, the money could also uh, be used to um, pay uh, federal workers, uh, military uh, companies that um, provide materials for the federal government for infrastructural work such as roads and so forth, all of which are assets. Um, and um, uh, it could be used also to help uh, people in small business uh, with uh, or grants um, which uh, might be payable over um, say a 10 year period and during which time uh, a part of the company's assets would be considered um, uh, owned by the nation and in the same sort of um, um, rent to own uh, facility uh, that is used for housing would be used to uh, provide these people the opportunity to regain their small business 100%. Um, the, um, uh, the housing market uh, could be spurred uh, very easily by um, uh, people, citizens who had accounts in the nation's banks, uh, going to the banks, uh, discussing their income, uh, and understanding from bank experts uh, what amount of housing uh, such income could buy, or perhaps a condominium. Uh, therefore, the citizen could take this information and go out into the country, and if they were able to find a unit uh, at that price, uh, they could then go back to the bank uh, and arrange to have the bank buy that property uh, and they would thereafter rent to own uh, and the asset would be slowly transferred from the uh, nation to the citizen uh, and in the process the citizen would uh, gain both an abode, a place to live uh, and a nice asset. So that uh, the whole people become richer, uh, we want to have a society in which we have lots and lots of wealthy people, but few super rich uh, who are able, who are in a position to corrupt uh, uh, the nation's policies to suit them. This is not good for the nation. Uh, so uh, we do bring these ideas to you uh, to consider. It's part of the. Um, the rough draft, so, so to speak, of the uh, planks and policies of the People's Party, a party whose concept uh, is we the people uh, and the general welfare. Uh, we don't think uh, that uh, having one American citizen controlling 40 or 50 billion dollars uh, and another living under the bridge is a good way to do.